So, our next topic will be uh, database modifications on the relational algebra. Database modifications and there are three types of database modifications that we will be talking about. Deletion, insertion and updating. So let us go over them one by one. So the first one is deletion. So deletion essentially means one or more tuples deleted from the relation. So it is simply the relation R that needs to be deleted. It's assigned in the following manner. So E is the expression that, this is the expression that says which tuples needs to be deleted and the rest is uh, very clear. So the result of the expression is a set of tuples which are deleted from R. Now this can be an expression or an actually can set may be specified. And here is one uh, very simple example. Suppose this is your A, B, C with R with the same example that So just one important thing that needs to be remembered is that only tuples can be deleted. Not the attributes cannot be deleted, only tuples can be deleted from a relation. Fine. So if I now do this R is equal to R minus an expression which is let us say something like this, then this results in the same schema ABC but then everything where A equal to 1 is deleted, so these two are deleted and this results in simply 2, 3, 5 and 2, 4, 8. And uh, similarly this can be something like this can be also said. You can say delete 2, 3, 5 which is a set of tuple which is 2, 3, 5. So then this one is uh, deleted. So this will delete only this and the others will be part of this. But in general it is more useful when expression like this can be specified for deletion. The next is insertion which is similar in the sense that a tuple is added. So this R, this R is, gets uh, expression with a union. So again, it's an expression and same uh, kind of things can be given. So here is an example. Suppose R is your A, B, C, which is 1, 1, 5, 2, 3, 5, 2, 4, 8. And if R is unioned with let us say specify a tuple 1, 2, 5, then of course the same all these uh, three things are copied and a 1, 2, 5 is added. So essentially it becomes 1, 1, 5, 2, 3, 5 and 2, 4, 8. Fine. So the next one is updating. Updating is a little more uh, involved in how to write it. Essentially the updating is given like an expression. So it is the projection of F1 up to Fn. So all the attributes from R are projected on. So all the attributes of R are projected on. And each Fi can be either the attribute itself that was there or some modification of the attributes. So some uh, expression on the attribute. Expression on attributes. So an example is the same. Let us say R is your A, B, C, which uh, is 1, 2, 5, 1, 1, 5, and 2, 4, 8. And let us say this particular modification is being done, which says A, but then it says 2 star B. So every B value is essentially doubled up. And this is being done. So this results in A, B, C with the following one. So this is doubled up. This 2 is doubled up. This is 5. The others remain the same. So this is 1, 2, 5. And this is 2, 8, 8. Very simply, this is what is being done. Then instead of R, what can be done is that a little something more can be done. So for example, 
it can be said that you want A, 2 star B, C on a sigma A equal to 1 of R. So that means first sigma A equal to 1 is done, so only these two attributes are modified and the resulting then B is doubled up, so the resulting relation is 1, 4, 5 and 1, 2, 5. So these are the three main database modification techniques. But what is more important for all of this is that all of this can violate some constraints. So these are called integrity constraints. So all of these uh, three techniques can violate certain integrity constraints. So let us start with deletion. So what can deletion violate? Deletion can violate what is called a referential integrity. This is called a referential integrity. So what does referential integrity mean? If we recollect what is the foreign key constant is that every foreign key must be a primary key of some other relation. So essentially what happens is that if a particular primary key value is deleted from the actual, uh, from the foreign relation, then a foreign key becomes orphan because it ha does not have the corresponding primary key. So this violates what is known as the referential integrity because this is now referring to something which is not present. So the referential integrity is violated. So a primary key may not be simply deleted, the deletion may not be simply allowed if there is a foreign key that refers to it. So what happens if a deletion or if the database is asked to do such a deletion? There are a couple of options. First is it is simply disallowed. So the operation is rejected. That is one way of doing it. The other is the deletion is cascaded to the foreign key. Cascaded to foreign key. There are two ways to handle this. Now, the first one is easy to understand. What do we mean by rejected? So the deletion doesn't take place. That's simple. In the second case, what happens is that if PK is deleted, the corresponding FK that refers to this primary key is also deleted. So the foreign keys are also deleted from the referencing relations. So these are the two ways of deletion. So deletion only violates referential integrity and these are the two ways of handling it. Now, of course, as part of this uh, foreign key cascading, this can be either deleted totally, so the entire uh, tuple corresponding to that foreign key is deleted or the foreign key may be set to null. This is another way of enforcing the deletion. So we next go on, what does a insertion can, what are the constraints that the insertion can violate and insertion can again violate the referential integrity. And this one is probably easier to understand in the context of the previous example is that if a foreign key is inserted, then there the corresponding primary key must be present. Otherwise, the insertion of this foreign key is not meaningful. So again, there are ways to handle it. So either this can be rejected, so this insertion can be rejected or the corresponding primary key may be inserted. Now this primary key may be inserted, but this, this generally does not make any sense because if you cannot just insert a primary key, primary key is something very, very important. So this is actually not a viable option. So the only viable option is to reject the insertion into a foreign key. So this is the first kind of integrity that the insertion can violate and insertion can also violate what is called a domain constraint. So a domain constraint is probably easier to understand. So there are certain domain values that are specified. For example, you can say the marks of a person is between 0 to 100 for a particular exam or whatever. So if a marks column is being inserted, if a tuple is inserted with the marks column outside this range, then that is not allowed. So again, there are two ways of uh, handling this. So either you reject or the domain is updated. The domain 
is updated. So suppose you later saw that uh, extra marks can be given or marks can be cut for punishment, etc. So you can the domain can be updated to, for example, minus five to uh, one hundred. So the the domain may be updated. So there are two ways of handling this. The next kind of constraint that insertion may violate is called a key constraint. So suppose there is a primary key or whatever, some other kind of key which is then. Now if an insertion violates the condition of being a primary key, so how does it violate? It becomes not unique. So if another tuple is inserted which has the same primary key as some other tuple, then that means this is no longer a primary key, no longer a candidate key or super key, whatever, and this is a problem. So that must not be allowed. Again, so this, there are two ways of handling this. Either this is rejected or there is a ex more extreme option which is declare it as non-key. in which case some other primary key must be done, etc., etc. So again, in general, this is not a very viable option and this is the only thing that can be done and that is being done. Then there is the fourth type of uh, thing uh, that insertion can violate, which is called the entity integrity. This is called an entity integrity. So entity integrity is that a primary key is, a tuple is inserted where the primary key is set to null. The primary key is null. This again should not happen because the primary key cannot be null by design. So because why is this called an entity integrity? What does the primary key mean? Primary key defines what the entity is about. Now if the primary key is null, the entity doesn't have any meaning. So again, this is not a viable option. So this must be simply rejected. So fine, so the insertion violates all these four conditions and if we now go to what the updates, updating can violate. Now essentially, updating can be looked upon as a deletion and then an insertion. So any integrity constraint that deletion and insertion violates are also violated by upgrading. So all those four uh, integrity constraints that we saw are also violated by updating. So that is what about the relational algebra. The, all the, so we looked upon the queries, etc., and we looked upon the power of relational algebra, the basic relational algebra, the extension of the relational algebra, and we looked at all the, the different, different operations, etc., including the database modifications. Now, just to wrap up the relational algebra thing, we need to talk about what are the drawbacks of relational algebra. So relational algebra seems to be very powerful because it can do a lot of queries and insertions and all those things it can handle, but it has got some drawback. The first thing is that this is a first order propositional logic. So anything that the first order propositional logic cannot happen, cannot handle, this cannot handle either. Although first order propositional logic is actually very powerful for real life, it may not handle certain other kinds of things. The other and very important thing that the database people face almost regularly is that there is no recursion. So there is no recursive closure. So recursive closure, there is no recursive closure. So for example, if you have uh, queries of the form, find me supervisors at all levels. So find me supervisor of this and then supervisor of that person, supervisor of that person up to all the levels. It cannot be done. It, you cannot say at all levels because there is no recursive closure. So there is no way to express this in relational algebra. These are the two most important drawbacks of relational algebra, but otherwise relational algebra is very, very powerful. And our next topic, which is SQL, is based on relational algebra. So this ends the relational algebra module and next we will talk about SQL.